This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So the last piece within our foundation stone of the conceptual framework is to look at capital maintenance. So what is capital maintenance? What's it all about? Well, effectively, there are two ways within the framework of looking at whether or not the capital that you have at the end of the year is greater than the capital that you have at the start of the year and therefore you have made a genuine profit and the fact there that that profit is not distorted by the effects of inflation and there's two ways in which we can go through and look at it that is the first one that we'll look at being your financial capital maintenance or sometimes also referred to as your money capital maintenance and then also your operating capital maintenance or sometimes referred to as your physical capital maintenance. Again, examinability, I don't think you're going to get a huge amount of marks on it. There could be the odd multiple choice question and then you could have two or three marks as a narrative explanatory part in one of the latter sections within the exam. Has that happened? As far as I can recall, there hasn't. Okay, so you can go through there and look at it and think, well, it's never really cropped up, so I don't need to worry about it. Or Maybe a better approach is to say, let's just get a basic knowledge of it. And hopefully we can get a couple of those marks available. So what you've got in terms of capital being maintained, effectively what we're looking at there is that your closing capital, if that is greater than your opening capital, so using the measurement bases that we've seen in the previous sections, then after the distribution that you've made to the shareholders, then you will have made a profit. Okay. And effectively, that's the accounting equation, isn't it? Now, if you go through there and say that your opening capital uh, plus your profit, that should then be equal to your closing capital, shouldn't it? So from what we've seen previously, if we just use some very basic numbers, if your opening capital is 100, if your closing capital is 110, and if the effects of inflation are not significant, then effectively that balancing figure, the difference is your profit, which is there at 10, isn't it? And what capital maintenance is all about is about how we go through there and express that profit figure when it is potentially there subjected to inflation okay so what we've got here what we've just gone through and described effectively is your financial or your money capital maintenance yeah, you've maintained the capital through the generation of pure profit. There is no impact there of inflation on your financial statements, on the numbers that you have reported. But what happens effectively maybe if there is some form of inflation, if there is some form of inflation and that's going to impact your profits. It could be that your closing capital at the end of the year is much higher than what we expected it to be. If the closing capital is much higher, then therefore your profits effectively are going to be much higher too. So what you can go through and do is that if you have inflation in a world of financial capital maintenance, then what you can do is you can use what is referred to as your current purchasing power, so CPP for short, and what we go through and do there with regards to your current purchasing power is that that is whereby you go through there and reflect a general level of inflation across your assets. So that when you've made that general inflation adjustment to the assets, yeah, you will then get a true picture of what the profit figure for the year is. And therefore, your profit figure is not overstated. 
what you go through and do there, just be careful. That will be inflation applied to your non-monetary assets only. So to you and I, at this level, that would be your PPE and your inventory because non-monetary assets are not readily exchangeable for cash. So their value does change based upon inflation. But if you look at cash, if you look at receivables as your, if you like, monetary assets, inflation doesn't impact them because whatever cash balance you have, that is the cash figure within your account. That's the amount of cash you have. It is just worth less, isn't it? Because it can't buy as much if you so wish. OK, inflation has impacted the power of money, hasn't it? Similar with your receivables, that's the amount that you're going to receive regardless of inflation. So here with your current purchasing power, if there is inflation present and effectively this financial money capital maintenance is what all businesses adopt, but they just ignore the effects of inflation because the effects of inflation are immaterial. And therefore, if it is immaterial, it is not relevant to the users of the accounts. And let's face it, it's going to get complicated. So why complicate it any further? Doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, so what we do is we effectively ignore the inflation. If you were to incorporate it, you would use current purchasing power, general inflation applied to the non-monetary assets. OK, could you write that down in two or three sentences? I reckon you probably could. Uh, the other type of capital maintenance that you've got is your physical, or if you like, your productive capacity capital maintenance. Uh, again, what we're asking ourselves there is we're saying, look, the closing capital is greater than the opening capital. So it looks like we've made a profit. But with that closing capital, could we actually buy more units of a specific asset uh, than what we could at the start of the year? So if inflation is significant, then we can't. And therefore, we would need to adjust that specific asset for the level of inflation. So whereby inflation was taken account of in your financial capital maintenance using general inflation here, when we're incorporating inflation to see whether or not our capital has been maintained, we're going to use what's referred to your current cost accounting or if you like, C, C, A for short. OK. So effectively, what we've got here, if, you know, we think back to the numbers that we had before. If we think about our opening and closing figures, I think we said before the opening was 100. So let's just say that, that you've got inventory of 10. Everything else is there at 90, so that gives me my, my 100. Uh, the closing was there as 110, wasn't it? Uh, the others still are at 90. If that's the case, the inventory must be there at 20. We're saying that the profit figure that we have is 10. But here we're looking at that change in that specific asset. So here, based upon your inventory and asking ourselves the question, can we purchase the same number of units as what we could previously as at the start of the year? If we can't, we need to make an inflation readjustment to go through there and reflect the number of units that we can actually physically produce or, if you like, physically go through and operate with within the business. OK, so what you're going to go through and do there with regards to your current cost accounting is that you're going to go through there 
and make specific inflation adjustments uh, to go through there and effectively show the value to the business. So we have these assets. What are they worth? How much could we effectively purchase now? Okay. Uh, and what you find if you go through and look at some of the detail with some of the study text, workbooks, whatever you prefer to call them, uh, that's referred to as the deprival value. Now, I'm not prepared to go into any detail about how you measure the deprival value for specific assets such as inventory and such as property, plant and equipment. If you wish, you're more than welcome to go through and look at that. But I just think that's pushing the world of capital maintenance that little bit too far.